Hey students and parents, this is Mr. Anderson. I'm the career and college counselor here. And one question that I get asked a lot is how do I choose what school to go to? How do I make that decision? It's a pretty significant decision to make in your life. And I think it's something that I think it's a valuable question to be asking. So I thought maybe what we should do is I should just create a workshop on this so that I can give you some pointers that I've collected through the years from articles I've read, as well as my experience as a parent helping my kids through this process about how to actually make that decision. Now, we all understand that the decision about where to go to college really is about a bigger deal than just the degree. It really is about they're going to spend years in this school having an experience and the school will oftentimes teach them more than just the curriculum or information needed for a future career. It's going to also give them opportunities to grow and develop as a person. So I want to, you to just remember that this is not just about academics. This is about something larger than that. It can be a scary process to go through. It can. But I will say if you end up going through an actual process with purpose and intention, it doesn't have to be as scary as it may feel going into it. There are a lot of factors to consider before choosing your school. So I would just encourage you to, to think about it in terms of it's you're going to have a purposeful and intentional process you're going to go through. So this, this doesn't have to be as scary. At the very end, I'm going to give you kind of some pointers on where to start, but we're going to talk about it as we go through it too. I do want to say before we jump into anything else, that this video really is more about choosing a university, a four-year university. It's not as much about community colleges, technical schools, trade schools. Those choices look sometimes a little different this is primarily going to be geared around how to make a decision around a four-year university. So with that being said, um, one thing that I do want to, to remind you guys is college is not the goal. I know it can feel that way. Parents, I know that sometimes we feel like getting them to college is what our goal is, but that really isn't. A student's goal is living a fulfilling life doing a career that fulfills them. In order to get to that point, college is a step in that process. It's not the actual destination, it's a step toward the destination. Please remember that, because I think that that will frame this whole thing differently. And if you haven't really figured out, students, what you wanna do in your future, if you haven't really figured out how to be future ready with a, a specific plan for your future career, vocation, that type of stuff, I would encourage you to focus on that part first. I do have another workshop um, that, that you can definitely do about how to be uh, future ready. I encourage you to watch that and kind of really think and, and work through some of those things using Zello as, as a great tool, but really be looking at... Um, how to be future ready before you figure out how to choose a college. All right, so when we jump into this, let's start by talking about the big picture. So what kind of things are you should you start to consider? How do you even get started with this? Well, number one, we start with academics because your program matters more than anything else. That doesn't mean that's gonna be the, dis the reason why you choose the college the specific college. However, if it's not for the program that they're going to offer, the rest of it's irrelevant. I had a student that came into my office at one point and asked and said, um, Mr. Anderson, I want to go to Eastern. And I said, well, that's great. Uh, what do you want to study at Eastern? And they said, well, I want to be uh, a radiology tech. And I kind of paused for a second. I said, well, do you realize that they don't have a program to be a radiology tech? If you wanted to do that, you could go to Spokane Community College and they have a great program. And they said, well, um, I, I, I'm just going to go to Eastern anyways, and then I can always go to SEC after I'm done. 
which kind of seems a little backwards, right? Because a, a degree at SEC is about a year of prereqs, two years of their program. In three years, you're done. Otherwise, you're having to go to Eastern for four to five years to finish a degree and then transfer to SEC for a two-year degree. That doesn't make sense, right? So your program really does matter. How you, What you do to start that is you just start making a list of any college that you even remotely want to consider with the program that you want to study. I'll share some resources at the very end so that you know where to go and find that information. But just start by making a list. Don't worry about how many are on the list right now. Have it be as long as you want. You'll start taking colleges off the list later. But just start with a list that has the programs that you want. And then also look at all of those schools that have the program that you want. What kind of other degrees that they have in case you go there and change your mind? Because we all know, especially parents, you guys know, kids change their mind a lot once they get to college. They start learning new things about themselves. They have different experiences and it leads them down a different path. And so you wanna make sure that the college that you're choosing hopefully has the program specifically that you want, but number two has some other programs that you would be interested in, whether it's a, a dual degree, whether that's a minor, or whether it's just as a backup plan in case you wanna change your mind. The other thing that really does need to matter in this entire conversation is cost. It needs to be pivotal in your decisions. Parents, I want you to hear this clearly. The cheapest option is not necessarily the right choice. And I know that that's hard sometimes to think, but it's not always the right choice just because they're cheap. And sometimes they can look deceptively cheap, but have a larger total cost of education, especially if it takes them longer to get through. So if it's going to take them you know, 4.7 years, so an average between four and a half and five years to get through a degree, which by the way, a bunch of state colleges, it does take that long. Or you can find another school that's a little bit more expensive, but it's guaranteed that they could get out in four years. You're actually gonna be saving money by going the little bit more expensive route because you're gonna spend less time there. You also want to look at those room and board costs because sometimes you feel like you're making the cheapest option because of the tuition, but then you look at the room and board costs and some room and board at some colleges across our country is $16,000 a year and others it's around $8,000 a year. So look at those total costs and keep in mind that what you're trying to do is not necessarily completely avoiding debt, but you want to reduce the amount of debt that you're taking out for college because you don't want to be burdened or saddled with a, with a mountain of debt by the time that you graduate. I, it's not always possible to get through college without any debt. And I know parents, you, you often tell your kids, you shouldn't end up going into debt for college. The, the reality is college is so expensive that sometimes that's just the reality. But if they can reduce the amount of debt and get a degree to lead them to a fulfilling career, they're going to be able to pay off that debt quickly. So you always start with the academics. But number two, the cost matters. It truly, truly does. Now, where do we go from there, though? How do we go into this intentional process? Well, number one, you look at the programs. So if they don't have what you want to study, then you take them off the list. There's no point to keep a college on a list if they don't have the program that you want. Even if you love the college for some reason, if they don't have what you want to study, then it's irrelevant how much you love it. Number two, you always look at the cost and you try and see, can you afford it? That does not mean as if it's the cheapest, because, but can you and your family figure out how to afford the cost of that school? And then the third part in that is to look at everything else. And it because it's sometimes the little things that truly matter. Ultimately, making that final decision is overwhelming. But keep this in mind. If all of the schools on your list have the program that you're looking for, and if all of the schools on your list 
have an estimated cost that you think is close to doable, then ultimately you turn to the other factors that we're going to talk about here in a second. And it's okay to make decisions based on little things. I have seen students make a decision on a college because of the location of the tennis courts. I know that might seem like a silly thing. However, if they have the program that they want, they're going to be able to afford the schools. And with all things considered, it's all about equal. But for this one student that the tennis courts were right by where a lot of the dorms are. And so they'd be able to play constantly, which is a big deal to them. Why not choose it based on that? If all pretty much all other things are equal, then it always is going to come down to those little things. So that's okay. How you will learn what of those little things are important to you are often going to be by going on campus tours. Now, this is what I always say. If you're wanting to go to a university after high school, the best thing you could do in your freshman or sophomore year is to visit a college campus and it doesn't even matter which one. Because the first one you visit will not always be the one that you care about the most. Sometimes it will be, but it won't always. But what you do is when you go to that first campus tour, that suddenly starts to reveal the things that you care about. Now with my son, we went on a campus tour his freshman year. And from that campus tour, he ended up seeing a lot of things he cared about and a bunch of things he didn't care about, which we were actually surprised about. So we started keeping pretty copious notes. Um, he, he learned pretty quickly that one of the things he cared about were the dining options. So there were large dining halls, there were small little eateries, there were all sorts of things in between. And of course he chose a school where it had two Chick-fil-A's on campus, right? Um, he also learned that he didn't really care about the rec center because he started reflecting on it. And even though they were very impressive for him, he didn't feel like he was going to go there a lot. So he didn't really care about that. However, for some reason for him, the architecture of the buildings was really important. What the campus looked like, that part was important. So it played into his choice. When you start to visit campuses, you're going to start to realize the things that matter. Now, let's talk about all those little things. Because sometimes people don't even know what kind of things that they'll want to think about. So let's talk about them. I divided them up into three categories. So let's get hit the first one. And that's a school category. So this is more the uh, university as an institution. What is it about them? Um, you know, factors about the institutional self. All right. So... Um, one thing you could be looking at, which I would encourage everybody to look at, is graduation rates. And you can go to collegescorecard.org and actually see the graduation rate of any college across our country. And that might play a part in where you choose to go because the graduation rate is low. That could be concerning for you, I mean, getting through their program. If their graduation rate is 100% from a lot of schools, well, then maybe it's not a big deal. Um, you also have to keep in mind whether they have a lot of online programs because sometimes that can have lower graduation rates. But regardless, graduation rates is something you can look at. Also, look at those estimated final costs because you always, like I mentioned earlier, you always want to watch uh, the costs of room and board and the additional fees. I've seen colleges that charge additional fees for kids going to sporting events. Uh, kids using the rec center and that some of those, those are all included in their tuition. I see some schools that have fees for um, a bunch of fees for using technology and at other schools, that's all included in the tuition. So look at how much, how much those additional, especially the optional fees end up uh, going to. And you can usually find those on the financial aid websites of these schools. Look at the location of the school. Is it in a city? Is it out in the country? Is it uh, in the suburbs? Is it by a big city? Is it in sunny Arizona or along the beach in California? Or is it up in the mountains um, right by nature? So you could do a lot of outdoor activities, whatever is important to you. Or, and this could be a big deal, is it close to home or far away from home or far enough away from home with still being close? 
you have to figure out what's important to you about the location, but that could play a big part in it. Also, the size of school. Some students want a really large, huge university with lots of stuff going on all the time and a lot of students to interact with. And other students want a small university where relationships are the key. They might not have as much going on around campus, but there's those relationships. You have to figure out what's right for you. Look at the size of classes. They'll oftentimes report on the average size of classes. Some schools have really large lecture halls and have a lot of lecture classes, uh, which will have three, 400 students in some of these intro level classes. It's usually more freshman level classes, but really large. And then other schools um, actually don't have large lecture halls because they never want their classes above like 40 students or something. Maybe that would be important to you. Look at the um, the classes. Are they taught by the faculty, the doctorate level fa faculty, the experts in their field? Or does the school actually employ a lot of grad students to teach their classes? Sometimes the quality of teaching um, can be impacted between those. Um, and so you want to, obviously, you usually want to be at a school where a large number of the faculty are teaching those classes. Um, it's something to consider. But then also some schools use a lot of adjuncts. And that can sometimes be a great thing because you're bringing practical experience into the classroom. Sometimes they don't have as much teaching experience so either and haven't studied up on their uh, teaching methods. And so sometimes it's lacking. At, again, Think about that and, and research that to see if that's something that's important to you. Also, maybe the tradition of the school is important, whether that's a family tradition where you have generations that have gone to the school or whether that's like um, a school steeped in their academic or historical tradition or their athletic traditions. And that's a big part of their campus. Sometimes that matters to people. And some people would say, you know what, I'd just rather be on a modern campus that has very little tradition so that we can just kind of have fun in a, a in a different way around the campus so um also the architecture does matter to some people that is all contingent upon you um however one thing that i would always consider um as you're looking at that is what is the degree of pressure to excel there are some schools due to their academic rigor or their reputation they have such a high degree of pressure to excel. And some students love that environment. Some students feed off of that environment and others crumble or they withdraw in that type of an environment. Some students would rather have a more laid back campus and other students want that really um, high pressure, um, highly driven type of environment. Again, you need to have self-awareness and figure out what's going to be important to you. Now, another thing that you want to consider are campus factors. So the first one's more about academics and the institution in themselves. This is more about student life. This is more about your daily living along with other students. So, for example, like maybe you want to be looking at the campus culture. So, are there a lot of activities that they do on campus constantly? Um, do they have a lot of clubs or activities? Do they play a lot of um, intramural sports? Do they, I mean, sometimes they have Quidditch matches. Yes, that's a thing on college campuses, by the way. Um, sometimes they'll do big zombie apocalypse um, fun activities. You know, there's some of those campuses are highly involved. And that not, might not be appealing to you. It might be super appealing to you, but you might also just want a more laid back campus where you kind of just hang out more than you do a lot of clubs or activities. But look at those clubs and activities to find what things might be connected to um, your degree, your program, or your passions. Also, the size of class will actually impact the campus feel as well. If it's a lot of large classes, well, you've got a lot of environments where lots of kids are involved and have a lot of view um, uh, discussions and debates and because it's so large and a lot of viewpoints. However, sometimes you want those smaller classes 
um, so that you have a more intimate conversation around topics um, and you get to know the professor a little bit more. Honestly, it's, it's all a personal preference. Look at the dining options. I mentioned earlier that to my son, that was a big deal. And if you look at some schools, they have amazing, huge dining halls with so many options. Um, some of them allow you to come and go as often as you please. Sometimes it's a number of swipes of your card that are kind of like just meals that you can eat per day. Sometimes it's a dollar amount and you're, and you're charged actually per, um, per individual item that you take. Some of them have individual eateries, though, instead of a dining hall. So they'll have a Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A, uh, Qdoba, um, Panda Express. They'll have all those type of things on campus instead of having a large dining hall. I don't think that there is one right way to think about that for all students. However, you want to consider what you would prefer in terms of the dining options. That's where going and touring campus is really helpful because you're able to actually see and experience those. Also the living spaces, whether it's dorms, how many dorms, what do the dorms look like? What's the layout of the dorm rooms? Um, are they like pod style where they have a common room with pods around it? Are they more apartment style? Are they real traditional dorm style with just two or three people in a room in a common bathroom? Sometimes you have a your own bathroom. I mean, all those types of things. Or do they have a lot of fraternities or sororities, which is something that you want to get involved with? Do they have apartments on or near campus? Again, all of those things are very personal. And you should make, I mean, that could be one part of your decision making. And then also pay attention to social spaces on the campus. So for example, what's their library like? You go to some colleges and they have a massive library. They'll have a quiet floor. Some of them have like a, a library that looks like the that big dining hall from Harry Potter. You know, it's honestly, some libraries are, are big, huge central parts of campus. And sometimes the libraries are just like an afterthought. Some kids care about it and some don't. How about the student union building where it ends up being kind of a hub for a lot of things that are happening around campus? What's that like? Do they have a rec center? A lot of colleges have rec centers. It's a huge joke nowadays on you have to know where the climbing wall is on your college campus because almost everyone does. It's kind of that it's become a keeping up with the Joneses. Everyone has to keep building climbing walls regardless of how often they're actually used. It's kind of funny. Do they have a big lawn where kids hang out or like a, uh, a central part of campus where people hang out? You know, again, these are all very personal things. Some kids care about them. Some kids don't. Some kids care that they're one way. Other kids care that they're the exact opposite. But be looking at those things to see what might be the most important for you. The campus environment is important to be considering. And then finally... Let's talk about the program factors you could be looking at. So how large is the program? How many students do they take every year? Is there a limit and is it highly competitive to get in the program? Or is there practically no limit and they just keep taking as many as they want and you have hundreds and hundreds of kids in a program? Honestly, there's positives and negatives for both of those. But you want to look at the program to understand how competitive, competitive is it going to be to get into what I want to study? Also, look at that competitiveness of the program because of it, they only take 20 students a year, 30 students a year, even 50 students a year. That could be a really small number compared to the number of students that attend the school. I remember uh, going on a tour of one of the campuses and they said, um, this one program, computer science is the most competitive program on campus. They have... Um, hundreds, no, I'm sorry, thousands of students that come to campus to try and study computer science at that one school, and they only accept something like 75 students a year. Wow. Could you imagine the pressure that that would put students under? Again, some students would love that because obviously if they have thousands of students fighting for 75 seats each year, there must be a good reputation for that, but you need to decide 
Is that what you want to experience when you go to that school? Also, look at the program spaces, whether it's the labs, the offices. Um, and in terms of labs, is it like a great nursing lab or a computer lab space? Do they have an esports lounge that both is social and kind of would go under more of the campus factor or it could be more of the competitive nature and then it plays into the academics as well so look at those program spaces what are they like do they have in their business building do they have an environment where you could really um, carry out entrepreneurial activity do they encourage that or do they just not have space for that and then finally the reputation of the program is sometimes what some students consider. I will say it doesn't always matter. For example, if you get a bachelor's of science and nursing degree and you pass your NCLEX, it kind of doesn't matter where you come from. Um, yes, some, um, some schools might have a little bit better reputation and get the jobs quicker, but nursing is in such high demand in a lot of areas of our country that if you get a bachelor's of science in nursing and you pass your NCLEX, which is the nursing exam at the end, then you're going to be working no matter what. Same with getting a bachelor's of science in computer science. The reputation of the program might yield initially a little bit higher salary, but you're going to be also employable from day one because it's such a need. There's a lot of areas like that, like engineering or... Um, dental hygiene, all sorts of things. But for some of you, the reputation of the program is going to be more important um, because it's simply just important to you that you're coming from a school with a great reputation from that program. Again, it's a personal matter and that's okay. It truly is okay to make your decision based on that. Now, Let's talk about that process. So we talked about all the factors. We talked about obviously starting with the academics, looking at the cost, and then considering everything else. So now you've got all this information that might feel jumbled. How do you end up processing all of it? Well, this is what I would suggest. Number one, start making a list. And I don't care whether you're a freshman in high school, a sophomore, or you're in your last year, you need to start a list. I think the earlier you start the list, the better. Then start doing your research. I'm gonna share with you in just a second some resources that will help you do that research. Find out the things that are important to you, and then right from the beginning, from day one, rank the colleges. That may seem like you're jumping the gun, but here's what I would say. You rank the, the colleges from the beginning, and then the more you learn, the more you change where the rankings go. So it ends up being an early start that you constantly adjust as you went through. My son was, from the very beginning, was sold on this one school. This is where he wanted to go. And he went two and a half years through high school until it was the summer before his senior year. And suddenly he hit... Uh, one of the last schools that we were able to tour and then started thinking about things as it was suddenly feeling very close and real. And his list almost flipped completely. The thing that was helpful in that whole process, though, was that there was a list and a ranking to start with so that he had been already thinking about how they all ranked. And then every college campus we toured or any one that he added to the list, we'd always say, okay, so where does that where does that go in the list? Does it go up at the top? Does it go after this school? Does it go at the bottom? You know, honestly, that was one of the most helpful things. That doesn't mean you're gonna necessarily choose your number one. Because sometimes when the financial aid stuff comes back, the cost doesn't make sense. And you choose number two, but you know it's your number two, okay? And then I'd always say visit as many of your top choices as possible. Absolutely as many as possible. I'm going to share with you a resource here in just a second in case you can't, but I would encourage you to visit as many as possible because sometimes you'll walk on the campus and something just won't feel right. Or sometimes you'll walk around and go, I feel like I walked into 
my home. I feel so comfortable here. It's best to do that when students are on campus, obviously, so that you see how busy it is, the, the life of the campus, where students hang out. However, if you don't have that opportunity and you have to go during the summer, then go during the summer. Totally fine. Again, and then just keep changing your rankings the more you learn and the more you visit. So you might start with a ranking of your top, I don't know, however many. Let's say you were able to rank 10 of them. And as you visited a couple campuses, maybe a couple of them, you're like, I never want to step onto that campus again. So you cross them off your list or you put them at the bottom. And then you're left with a shorter list. And then you start changing them because you go, you know what, I really liked the dorms and the living environment, the classroom spaces at this one, but I really like the dining options at this one. And honestly, the dorms are more important to me than the dining options. So I'm going to put those in, in this kind of an order. That's great. The more you learn, the more you'll shift that list. Now, in terms of actually doing your research, I'm going to start on the right side of the screen. College Scorecard can give you a lot of good data. Students don't always love looking at this site because it's kind of boring because it's all about numbers and data. However, um, it can be very helpful. Parents, this is often a place that you can definitely start to look at graduation rates and a way to kind of support your students on finding out some of the data. Um, at the bottom of the screen there, Big Future. Big Future is a, a, a site that College Board, who made the PSAT and AP and SAT, all that stuff that they created, it's got some great um, information that is pretty comprehensive, and I would encourage you to check that out. The one in the middle there is a newer site that I think is really exciting, Campus Real. So it's campusreal.org. And what you can do is you can go and search for colleges in there. And on these colleges, you could end up looking at um, videos that students, current students, have um, have created where they walk around campus or walk through a dining hall, walk through the rec center, talk about the dorm rooms. They make these videos and they post them on the campus reel. So you end up having a student perspective. You're also able to see a lot of places that you sometimes won't always see on the website of the college itself. I encourage you to check it out. I've had a lot of fun going through Campus Real. But then also on the left-hand side here, I think is really important. We have purchased the use of Zello because we feel like it is a great resource for all students. You log into it through PowerSchool. You should know how to do it by now because that's how we complete the high school and beyond plan. But in Zello, there are such great resources, not just to determine the right career for you, but also when you look at the college pages, it's awesome. In fact, on a lot of the college sites, not all of them, but a lot of them, they will end up even doing a virtual walkthrough of the campus. So you can kind of walk around campus from the comfort of your own couch and see what it's like. It's a really cool option. I encourage you to check it out. It also has a lot of uh, deep and rich information about each of the schools. So between all four of these, you should be able to have a lot of different information to help you research the colleges, start your list, then put them into a ranking. And then as you visit more and more schools, you can end up changing those. Now, let me just give you a couple final thoughts. Number one, and I think this is important, you can look at as many estimated final costs as possible. You could also even use what's called um, the financial aid estimators, or um, they have different tools on their website to end up giving you an idea of, it's called a net price calculator that can kind of give you an, a general idea of how much you'd pay. But I would always caution you to not make your final decision until you actually know the final cost. Because after the colleges accept you, they will then send at some point during your process, they will send you a financial aid package. It's often called an award letter or a financial aid award. 
and you're able to look at the total cost of attending and how much financial aid they can offer you. And sometimes they will surprise you with offering more financial aid than you initially thought. And on the flip side, sometimes they will offer you less financial aid than you thought. Which is why I would always say, don't jump at the chance of making that final decision until you've seen the finances. Don't rule out those schools based on your finances until you know the actual number. And don't just assume when your parents say that they don't have any money, they might not have any money, but maybe they're able to help support you a little bit as you go through, or maybe not at all, but you realize that you'd be able to afford this school anyways, even without parental support. Know your finances, but then also know the real, the actual number. And then... And this part's important, and it sometimes can be a disappointment for some students. But make sure you have an option that you know you can afford. For some students, that's a community college. A, a student loan from the federal government, called a direct Stafford loan or a direct student loan, can easily cover the cost of a community college for a year. So no matter what, if you have no money, nothing saved up, no job, no anything, you can take out some loans to cover that if you if that's how you need to do it. You can also work a part-time job as you go through the year and take out zero loans and pay for it along the way. For other students, the affordable option that you know you can afford is Eastern because you can save on the room and board and stay at home. Eastern does have what they call a freshman resident requirement. However, they waive that for students that live in the general, the greater Spokane area. And so you can sign that, stay at home, and then you're only dealing with the cost of tuition and not the room and board, which is at Eastern, room and board is way more expensive than the actual tuition. Other students, the cost isn't going to be as impactful. But that's where I would again say at least wait to know your full finances and wait to see the final number that, that they provide you. That part will be important before you make that final choice. I just want you to know though, as you go through this process and as you're trying to make your list and as you're trying to um, rank them and all those things, remember there's no right or wrong way to rank your college. So. So definitely make sure that you give yourself permission to rank them based on whatever factors are important to you. However, as you're going through this process, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help support you. I'm here to answer questions. I can't make your list for you. I can give you maybe a couple more to think about, but I can't make your list. But I can sure help you think through them. I can help you process. I can help uh, answer questions. And parents, I am here not just for the students, but also for you if you have additional questions. So good luck in this process. Again, start as early as possible. But even if you're about to be a senior and you're trying to decide which one, you don't need to make a decision until May 1st of your senior year. All you need to know is what schools you're applying to. So make your list, rank them, do your applications. And then as you go through the year, Keep changing your rankings based on the information you know. So good luck with this process. Again, it can be overwhelming, but this is an exciting time. And so have fun with it.